Now, in our last episode, when we were uh, trimming these things down, there was something else that I had wanted to try, and I, I didn't do it. So we're just going to nip off J1, and uh, what I had wanted to try was, if you remember, when we were doing the Bismarck, these uh, Tamiya nippers, they, they cut extremely close. And if you do it just right, it, you don't even have to do any sanding afterwards. That you can, like I can just barely feel that. Okay. Put it on here and I just sort of go around a little bit. And, okay, that, that is, that's going to take very, very little sanding. So what I'm thinking of is why could I not have tried to hold this down flush on the bottom of the hull and then just sort of worked my way around on it sort of the same way a pipe cutter works you know and I, I think it probably would have worked it's, they open up enough you know it looks like they'll handle something that would, was that big and I'm, I'm really sorry that I didn't remember to do that afterwards anyway let's uh, uh, get these things up we got J1 here you know I was just thinking here if I'm smart Maybe I should be numbering these things. Okay, so this was number one. Nobody's going to be, uh, you know, seeing the, uh, the the numbers anyway. These are going to be hidden inside the hull. Okay, that's number two. Uh, number three was the nameplate. We took that out already. Okay, so this is four. This is five. This is seven. And this is six. Well, I guess I didn't need to put a line under it. It's obviously not nine. Okay. Now, remember last year, we took our empty sprues and we hung them up on the wall? I don't think I'm going to do that this year. We had fun last year doing that. and Yeah, we will have fun doing something else this year. And the last one. I can almost scratch that off with my fingernail, it's so flush. Okay, a couple of things here. I was kind of wondering, why didn't they have these things numbered? One, two, three, four, or the other way. Like here's one, and here's two, and then, anyway. And uh, another thing I thought at first, it, it probably doesn't matter which way these things go in, you know, they're probably mirror image to each other, but they're not. If you notice, well, it's kind of hard to see, but they, they aren't mirror image to each other. They're, uh, there's a bit of a, a bevel there. So in other words, in order for this one to fit properly, it has to go in this way, not this way. And then, of course, the last one is beveled the other way. Kind of hard to see there. Yeah. Okay, step two. Uh, we aren't actually done step one because we're supposed to glue them in place before we put the deck down but I wanted to put these pieces down so I have to find the three pieces the fore deck, the rear deck and the center deck. Well they're pretty obvious okay 
the moment of truth here. I have not tried this yet. Okay, that one's going to go there. This one's got to go here. this tucks in underneath here. I wonder if I've got the right pieces here. Oh, I see. There's uh, another piece that has to go in here later. Well, I'm pretty pleased from what I can see so far here. Um, it appears to be quite good. I would say it's just as good as the fit on the Bismarck. However, what is going to happen if we... See, my, my worry was that if I glue this tight together, I should be repositioning the camera so that we can get a little closer onto the problem if there is any. I don't think there's a problem. I think that from what I can see right now, if I glue this together tight like that, this should still fit. I wonder how I can hold that together and get this in at the same time. I'll think of something. Now I'm not planning on gluing the deck in right now. Uh, because I want to paint the top or spray the top, the deck tan, and uh, and I want the, the the top of the gunnel here to be the same color as the sides of the of the hull. Um, otherwise, it's just not going to look right as far as I'm concerned. Because this this piece that I'm touching right now would not be deck tan. Only the the teak decking would be deck tan. So uh, yeah, so. Well, what? Let's just for the fun of it. Maybe you just, just lightly, tack this uh, uh, thwart or cross member in place. Just, just lightly, and see if this would still fit. I, I, I think it will. Okay, here's the plan. Notice how we got a little bit of play right here. And if we get these together, like get this together like this, and then hold it with the tape, um, you notice how, you know, there's this flat place right here, and then it fits right there. So I'm just thinking, how would it be if I put a little, little bit of CA glue right there, and the same on this side right here, down down near the bottom, just just a little bit, and then uh, hold it together. Okay, this is that uh, CA CA medium. Don't want a whole lot here now. Just just enough. Okay. Now before it has a chance to. Secure in the open position. Well, whoops, pull this tight, put it down, make sure that's seated all the way down here. Is that together as good as it can go? I, th I think it pretty much is. Now, I would imagine that's going to cure pretty quick here. Just leave it for a few minutes. The moment of truth here. I don't want to pull too hard because it might break it apart.
Now, in order to know exactly where this uh, piece in question comes, I have to have the bow section as far forward as it's supposed to go here. I think that's about it. I know you can't see it, but up at the bow it's matching up pretty good there. Because there, there doesn't seem to be anything on the bottom of these things to lock in place. I wonder what this was for. Huh. Okay. Oh, I see. It's got to do with the uh, molding of this part right here. Okay. Now, how is our fit here? Perfect. Perfect fit. Well, I would think, if that's the case, it's probably safe to fasten the rest of these down and to reinforce this the rest of the way with some maybe uh, extra thin. Okay, our bow cross member, or as one of the viewers says, he thinks it's called a bulkhead is a uh, pretty good fit already here. I think it's going to pretty much want to stay in the right place. Here we go. Now there is a a little bit more working time with this with this uh, CA thin because it sort of dissolves the plastic and it gives you a little bit more time to sort of work it into place there before it actually solidifies. Okay, I think if it sets right there, this this ridge along here should line up with the top here. At least it appears to. I just want to make sure that our that the uh, top here is not higher than it's supposed to be. Otherwise, it's going to be holding our deck up. I'm pretty sure I got it seated down as far as it'll go here. Okay, now we'll move back to the next one. I'm just going to do them all the same way. Okay, we have worked our way down to the very last one here. Now I don't want to squeeze too hard here because if I do it comes up so I don't this one's almost a perfect fit as well. Just hold it here for a couple of minutes and then let her go. Now when I was working on that last bulkhead there, I noticed that there's little ledges here. So I thought I wonder what's on the other side of the hull here. So so I looked and there's there's absolutely nothing on the other side and I was wondering was this sort of some sort of plan that Trumpeter had that there was going to be sort of a deck there because the the spacing from this ledge up to this ledge is almost what I think probably would have been a deck so I don't know what's going on there that's kind of interesting would have been you know I'd like to know what were they thinking now another thing that I'm noticing my coffee cup's empty. I do not want to give the misconception that I'm drinking this expensive Keurig coffee all the time. 
Just every once in a while I get a hankering for a flavored one. In this case, it's vanilla hazelnut. Yeah, I usually drink the ordinary uh, coffee, the, the Folgers. It uh, tastes good and it's a fraction of the cost. Now, mind you, I don't know if it has as much caffeine as this flavored coffee does, but uh, that doesn't matter. It tastes good and it does the trick. Okay, we should be good for a little while here now. Okay, probably a little over an hour has passed now since I glued these in. But even so, I don't want to be putting too much force uh, in case it's a tight fit because the extra thin will probably still be a little bit on the soft side. Well, not, not soft, but... Okay, that, actually, that <laughs> that's a beautiful fit. My goodness. Trumpeter, you're to be congratulated. Well, that one fits good. And we already sort of tested this one out. It fits good too. I'll move the camera in so that you can see what's going on here. I don't think there's going to be too many places where I'm going to have to be using what you might call crack filler. I think I could probably get these to these joints to match up pretty good. Would this be a natural expansion joint on the ship or I don't know. Well, we'll call it an expansion joint. Uh, yeah. Try and get my fingers out of the way so that you can see how well everything fits here. Well, I'm as pleased with this uh, hull and deck matching up as I was with the uh, Bismarck. Uh, looks really good to me. Okay, every time I think that we're just about ready to take the hull outside and spray the primer, the reason I want to do it outside is because the primer I want to use, if you remember when we did the Bismarck, the uh, primer was that lacquer. Now we probably won't be needing these parts for a little while. All right, so when we flip over to step three and four, step three, it wants us to uh, put the, uh, the uh, I guess, uh, I, I want to call them mandrels, but I know it's not a mandrel, on the back here. The, the bracing for the, for the propeller shafts. It's probably a proper word for it. Maybe I should look it up. Now, over the last year or so, you've often heard me refer to somebody as Tennessee Jim. Tennessee Jim, he's the one who sent us those Tamiya mini Q-tips, or as some people call them, cotton buds. Well, there's another Jim. We're going to have to refer to him as Thailand Jim, because he lives way down in Thailand. At least that's where he's retired. And, uh, yeah, thanks to Thailand Jim, we have these drawings. They are going to be so helpful during this build. Thank you, Thailand Jim. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we got to do that before we can take this thing outside and spray it. Okay, let's find the parts. Now we need E17 and E18. 
And here we go, 17 and 18. And the first time I saw these, I thought, oh, they look the same. But I'm realizing now that this one is a little larger in diameter than this one. And, of course, we need two of each, so... Okay, we'll get those trimmed up and uh, get our ship hull back. Looks like a little bit of flashing on the end there, doesn't it? Well, that won't be hard to sand off. Now, a few minutes ago when I was working on these, I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice if they came already cleaned up and everything so you wouldn't have to, you know, sand them and get the flashing off and stuff? And I thought, well, that's really stupid. Then I may as well get the model already made. Yeah, the whole idea is having fun getting all this, you know, working on the little parts. It's amazing how long it takes. I think I did pretty good. Maybe could have done a little better right there. It's not too bad though. No, I'm just thinking it probably makes a lot of sense to get these pieces right here at the same time. A12, 13, 38, and 39. Now, I, I probably or could have guessed that this piece right here, like right there, is called the shaft bracket. But who would have thought that the piece that comes out sort of horizontally from the hull is called the palm, P-A-L-M. Yeah, a palm. Never would have guessed that. Anyway, we're getting on here today. I have to cut this video right now or I'm going to be late uploading to YouTube. So thanks for watching and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow with these little pieces.